and welcome to Moments with Shy Will. Today we have a very special guest. Tiffany Wilson is a family nurse practitioner working in primary care. She's also in aesthetic medicine. Welcome to thank Moments you. with Shy Will. How are you today? I'm well, thanks. And how are you, Shy? Yes, I'm doing wonderful, <laughs> yes. Awesome. So um, when did you decide to be a nurse? Oh, what? moment led you to be a nurse? Well, I think, so I, I had a few careers. Okay. I graduated with a bachelor's degree from Florida A&M University in graphic design communications management. Okay. And then the housing market crashed <laughs> <laughs> in 2000 and like five, six. So all the jobs were lost. Oh. Yeah. I became a teacher in about 2005. Around then they laid all the teachers off. Oh during that time, so I was like, okay, well, my mom's a nurse, and she kept begging me ever since I went to college in 98, yeah. do the nursing program at FAM. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so she was like, Tiffany, do the nursing program. I'm telling you, nothing will ever crash around nursing. And I was like, I fine. I understand what she means. Uh -huh. I'm like, fine, mom, you know, I, I didn't want her to be like, mom's always right. Uh -huh. But I did it. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was around 2005 or 2006 when all the teachers were laid off. I was one of them. Oh, man. And I was like, okay, let me start my prerequisites. Mm -hmm. And I went into nursing. And how has that been ever since for you, making that decision? <laughs> hey, mom's always right. <laughs> Literally, she still holds that over my head. Yeah, of day, course, but, it's um, okay. <laughs> yes, it has been an amazing decision. Uh -huh. I've got to meet people from all walks of life. Sure. I have gotten to take care of people. I mean, nursing, you see everyone at their worst. I was an ICU nurse. Mm. Um, I began my career in ICU nursing, so that is like one step before, you know, either they're gonna live or not. Yeah. And um, so I, I got to make a lot of impressions with a lot of families at their most critical times. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I got to take care of some very sick people. Some recovered, some didn't. Um, it was very meaningful work. There we go. And um, you know, that it was amazing. And I, I, start, I decided to become a nurse practitioner in 2012. Mm. Oh, so you've been there for a while, some time, time. Okay, yes. congratulations. <laughs> I'm not going to be aging myself. <laughs> you don't anything. have to. <laughs> However, yes. So yeah. I became a nurse in 2008. Uh -huh. And then I was like, um, in 2012, I decided to go to NP school. Okay. All right. Congratulations again. So um, did you have any level of difficulty while opening up uh, your practice with you and your mom? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's loaded. <laughs> that is loaded. Um, I remember going to the bank um, mm -hmm. to apply for a business loan. And they told me, um, you know, in, in, in medical, the only people that we give business loans to, this is Bank of America, uh -huh. uh, they said, we, um, in any major bank, it, our dentists, doctors, veterinarians, and the only non business loan startups that we give to um, that are not in medical are lawyers. That's it. So if you're not an MD, if you're not a dentist, if you're not a vet, um, and you're in the medical field, sorry. So yes, that was I very... would think that would be the first people. The f I mean, come on. Well, they, they give loans to those people. I'm a nurse practitioner. Okay, so, okay, I get it. So they were like, yeah, you know, if you want to go back to school for another four years, then come to us. We'll give you a loan to open a medical practice. If not, we're sorry. Wow. So that was, um, that was, I was like, wow, so then what are you going to do? So yeah, that was, it took a lot of uh, <laughs> ingenuity. Back and forth too. <laughs> yes. That's what it sounds like. Um, has, is there any like... So working with your mom, which is amazing, you know, you guys are in business together. Um, what are the dynamics between you and her in this environment? She still tries to be right all the time. 
just like she acted like she was right when I went to nursing school. Yeah. And school. So, you know, it's it's she's a ball of 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 laughter and of just she's very she's a comedian. Yeah. She doesn't that, even I like realize that. you got someone to make you laugh and, she's, and laugh with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she's Jamaican and on TikTok she goes viral Ooh. a lot because of just just and she's not even trying. That's right, thing. right. So the patients love her. I mean, I love her. Um, our practice is a we see adults eighteen yes. and over. Okay. And um, basically, we treat everyone, you know, almost like their family. And um, that's why a lot of patients love coming to us. You're not a number. We all know. We know everyone's first name on a first name basis. Yeah. With all of our patients. So it's it's wonderful. It's dynamic working with her, um, and yeah, we're the only two providers in our practice. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if somebody wanted to join the team with you guys, are you open to that? Well, right now we are open to um, we're we're actually uh, considering an MD to join our team. Mm -hmm. um, um, and we've known him, you know, a long time. So it's yeah. it's it's more so. Um, if that that's what we are considering now. Okay. Currently. And so, what are you looking for in a person? An MD. <laughs> I'm looking for. Um, we already have someone in mind. So, but but <laughs> pretty much how he fits the criteria okay. is. Um, we've known him a long time. He's mm -hmm. more so like like an, like family, like extended family. Um, and he is comedic. Also, <laughs> all his he reminds me of like a male version of my mom. Yeah, there we go. So, <laughs> so basically, uh, like he has a great. Fault. His patients love him. He treats mm -hmm. patients like people and not numbers. That's one of our main models. Like patients are people. You treat them like family. I like that you said um, that. So That's important. It is important because yes. if you see your family member going for a procedure, you're gonna be all over that. You're gonna be like, is yeah. this done right? Is this done right? Is this done right? Um, and that's how we are with our patients, mm -hmm. um, where, you know, a lot of hospitals, um, when they see that they're patients of our practice, they're like, they tell the patients, I've had patients come back to me and say, oh, right before I went into surgery, they're like, oh, um, the hospital that I was at, the doctor said, oh, you're, this is your primary, I'll send everything, you're in excellent hands. So it's wonderful, oh my God, it feels wonderful to, yes. to see that or to even hear that that's our presence. I like that. That's definitely. All right. <laughs> Sharks will be right back. You got me believing that I can seize the day. You got me hooked on a feeling. When I graduated from the Honors College with my Associates in Arts degree, I had the choice to either enter into a larger university or to stay at Miami Dade College. I don't think if I was in a larger university, it would be as easy as it was to just integrate myself into a, a research group as I did. So I'm very thankful for Miami Dade College for offering me all of these opportunities that I perhaps would not have seen in a larger college. You're watching MDC TV. Welcome back, Sharks. You're tuning in with Moments with Shy Will. We have been speaking with Tiffany Wilson, is a family nurse practitioner working in primary care, also aesthetic medicine. So, which moment in your life inspire you to become a certified esthetician? Please. So, um, this is the, the moment when I looked in the mirror and I'm like, oh my God. Looks like I'm getting old, like right, and, <laughs> and I was I was younger at the time, and now I'm like, what was I talking about? But um, so like I twenties, went... like late twenties, old, because you know when we start feeling twenty five, we're like we're getting old, like later twenties, like, okay, like, like early th like thirties, okay. You know? so I was like, oh my goodness, you know, uh -huh. I'm getting old. So I sought the help of an aesthetic NP, which is what I am now, and. Um, I got some work done, um, you know, on my face, just some fillers, okay. in different areas. Um, 
And when I went home, you know, like I, I, I would look in the mirror and I, I'm like, no, put some more right here. Like I'm telling okay. her, although I don't know anything actually about this. This is before um, you became certified. This right. is the moment this that is, lead up. Okay. Right. Okay. So I was like, okay, put some more hair, put some more hair. And I'm like literally kind of directing the treatment. Uh huh. And I got home and I was like, you know, well, if she had put more hair, 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 I was not happy with my results. Oh. I was not happy with my results. I spent a lot of money. I'm sure. Aesthetic treatments. A lot of pain. Are, it's not painful to okay. me, but it is to you. costly. <laughs> to you. So it is pain there. Give me one second. Hold up. So it is pain because it's, what is it? Like a needle, right? It's a needle. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, girl. Needles. I don't even know. They, they do topical, topical numbing. I don't have you any know. tattoos for that particular reason. Oh, my goodness. If I hear that needle, I'm fainting. You're done. Go ahead. You're like, yeah. you're done. Uh -huh. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> so it was costly. And I was like, well, this doesn't look right. Uh -huh. So I'm going to go get certified. Even if I have to get certified to inject myself, um, that's what I'm going to do. Because I, I am one of those people, like, I, I, it's hard for me to trust a stylist, people to do okay. things for me because I will always go and redo it. Okay. I'm I, that person. I, I get it. That's just like me. If my friends do hair and makeup, they're not allowed to do my hair and makeup because we will fall out because you didn't do it correctly. There you go. <laughs> so I'm so happy this was not a friend. No, because we I can... Yeah. Right, I can I can stamp that for sure. Thank you. So, like, what are the procedures that you specialize in? Bo um, for aesthetic medicine, Botox, yeah. dermal fillers, mm. um, Morpheus. Um, I specialize in weight loss. Morpheus would. Morpheus eight treatments. That's radio frequency microneedling or heated up microneedling. Uh huh. So basically, it tones the like it pretty much gets rid of the fat and tightens the skin. Oh, um, so that would be like good for like my fat back because I got a lot of that. You know, that's, I'm the, I mean, I'm my the, sister I'm calls the. me skinny fat and I'm like, I'll take that because the word <laughs> skinny is still in front of it's fat. It's still in it. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll so take that. So would that be a procedure for something like that, the fat yes, back? absolutely. I have patients who does have a similar concerns, okay. uh, muffin tops, as you call it, fat back. That's what it is. But um, turkey neck, you know, they have. No, that's okay. Yeah, I just you're, you're, need, I just your need silhouette a whole is perfect. Off on the grill, girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're perfect. You don't need that. But I, yeah. that's what that, that helps as well. And, um, you know, it's like, have you ever heard of cool sculpting? Yes. So I believe it's cool sculpting's like bigger, better, bigger, better version and brother. It's like the best. That is so cool. So. Question, what happens to that fat that you're, you're burning it? Is it getting so burned? It's, so basically, it's, the technology is, it's, it's, um, the pins are made of gold and stainless steel. Mm. Um, yeah, so that's why it's, it's pretty, it's a little costly, but they're made of gold and stainless steel. They're heated up to a certain frequency. Mm -hmm. um, when you inject that, basically, it, I'm not gonna say it burns the fat, but it's almost like, think of a hot knife going into butter. It's easy. So it, it melts. melts. Gonna, but where, where does it go? Like where You're going to process it out of your system. So when you we, go to we the tell restroom, you to drink a lot of water. When you go to the restroom. Because I've heard fluids. that before. I was always afraid to do it. And then and I said, well, where is the fat going? Where It has to come out. So I guess mm -hmm. when you, okay. Yeah, drink, go, drink a lot of water, drink a lot of fluids, flush your system. So once you go to the restroom and everything, it's like, okay, I understand. That makes a lot of sense. Because I always wonder where it's going. Because even once before... Um, I want someone was saying, oh, you know, if you're sweaty a lot under the arms, you know, maybe you should consider getting Botox or something. You can. And Absolutely. I'm like, well, where is that sweat going? That's what she couldn't answer me. I mean, we were just having a conversation. She's she's not well, in I'll the medical you, field. I'll give you an answer. So, I can give you an answer on that. So when you Botox the glands or the sweat glands uh -huh. in that area, what you're doing, Botox um, is a, it's pretty much paralyzes your it's a paralytic. I don't like that word. But it's a paralytic. Okay. It's a paralytic. Okay. It's botulinum toxin. It is a toxin. It is a paralytic. Um, and it's going to almost put those, that area, those glands to sleep. So they're not going to be producing as much. They will still produce. It will still produce, of course. But very minimal. Very minimal. And then they wake up in three or four months. Okay. And complications. Because I know everything has side effects. Yes. Let's be for real. They're very minimal. 
Very minimum. That with the, with the Botox, yes. Okay, Very so minimum. so so no irritation, no club foot. I don't know what that is, club but foot. I, <laughs> I heard that. That's what's when that? the babies are born. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> No, I'm just stating because I know everything has side effects, of even course. relationships, you know? <laughs> and oh, we those still are get the biggest side effects. Yeah, exactly. We need disclaimers on those. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> so that's why I'm asking because, you know, our audience, our sharks want to know as well. Yeah. And also, science is always creating something new. Is there any innovative procedures that are coming out that you would like to experience? Oh, there's always procedures is there out. is there a thing that you haven't tried yet that's new um there is um i think a procedure with renuvia or i think it's called renuva uh -huh. it's um it mimics fat and oh. um basically you can do like but filler or different kinds of filler with it. Um, it's that's not as new. It's just something I haven't tried yet. Okay. And I love like I, I like the results on that. I've seen you know we're all on Instagram and TikTok. So yeah, yeah, I yeah. Like, I like the results on that. Um, I may try that in the future. Uh -huh. Something, but I still offer like a lot of other things. I do threads, mini facelifts, right? Mini facelifts with threads. Mm -hmm. With threads. Mm -hmm. So what are they doing? This? Yeah. Exactly. That sounds like it Exactly. Hurts. So it's literally, it's, oh, listen, you didn't realize beauty is pain? It is. Okay. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't but, know. But we make it comfortable. We numb you. We give you You numb some, someone. We yeah, that's what the dentists always say to me. And I'm like, yo, doc, I could still feel it. Like, I didn't get enough. <laughs> yeah. That's literally my patients yesterday. Like, yeah, you got it. I'm, I'm, I'm not the one numbing type at the dentist. I'm the three triple numbing type. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> got it. So, yeah. All we right. Want, we make you comfortable. Okay. Got it. Yes, Sharks. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. You got me believing that I can seize the day. You got me with us. This is Moments with Shy Will. So now, let's have a little fun. It's time for self-reflection, okay? okay? Don't be afraid. Okay. So tell me, what lessons have you learned in failure? The lessons that I've learned in failure is the only way you truly fail is if you give up. Mm -hmm. You will never win if you quit. Mm -hmm. And um, the only time you truly fail is if you never get up and try again. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's been <laughs> there's been many failures, but all of those are lessons mm -hmm. um, because I've learned something, and yeah. those are lessons that will stay with me and will make me do better in the future. That's right. So I I don't think of failure as um, the end, I think of it as the, a lesson and a new beginning in doing things a better way. Right. And when you say that, in my mind, I'm thinking, I'd like to say obstacles, really. Right. The obstacles that, you know, we face, we challenge. Mm -hmm. And it's true. How, how would you know if you failed if you haven't really tried? You know, mm -hmm. you have to actually try. And some people, they give up because mm -hmm. the process is not happening fast enough. Fast enough, yes. And that's that. I believe that's number one reason why mm -hmm. people choose not to. Absolutely, go back to if they things. throw on the towel, yeah. you know, it's not. Oh, I wasn't a millionaire in the first six months, mm -hmm. so I'm done. Right. And um, I think that um, continuing and pursuing your dream. Yes. I think that you know, not giving up and continuing and pushing through, mm -hmm. um, and having a hope. 
yeah. that it will get better. You yes, know? and that's what I always <laughs> say to myself. Like, yes. I mean, it's a struggle for me almost every day. I'm not going to sit here and pretend it is not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There you go. Um, but, I, you know, I, I have to be true to myself. You know, I have to be realistic. And I make sure I am as much as I can possible, you know. And I do have my moments where I'm like, oh, my God. I'm not saying I want to walk away, but I'm like, I have to remind myself, why is it that I'm doing what I'm doing? Why did I choose this career? Does it best fit me? And guess what? It all comes back. Like, girl, you tripping. You better get up. You better get up. <laughs> you better get up. So sometimes you have to be your own motivation. You do. You have to be your push. You know, Ooh, so you I would listen to the choir. It's <laughs> gonna make me start praising it. Girl. <laughs> yeah, because I would listen to my shows. I would watch my shows. Yeah. You know, this is where I know to make the improvements, the corrections, you know, it gives me, it feeds me great energy, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah. I, I really am. Mm -hmm. And I, and I like that answer that you said. Um, what matters to you in life other than your family, of course, in your mm -hmm. career, is there anything else that matters to you? Impact. Mm. Leaving this world better than when I found it. Mm -hmm. um, so you definitely want to leave a footprint somewhere. Absolutely. You will. You're in the health um, <laughs> business. That, that's, and I've, that's left a, I've left a lot of footprints, even to, to date, um, yeah. even with the ICU patients um, while they're taking their last breath. And if their family is in New York, I'm family. Yeah. I became family. I became the daughter. I became the mom. I became the family. Yeah. Um, and that's impactful. Yes. That left a footprint. I like that. Um, even in dealing with my patients now mm -hmm. that are my patients that come to my practice, um, you know, advocating for them as much as I can. Yeah. Um, some of them are elderly. Some of them don't have family. Um, trying to find ingenious ways and different ways to get them if they, they need meals on wheels. Just, you know, anything. Mm -hmm. Um, if I can be impactful and leave a good footprint in someone's life, make a mark, even in just one person's life, yeah, that's that's good enough. For yeah, me. that's that's good. And then, like when you when you leave, when you do, when you say something like that, how do you separate your personal life? Because you know, like yes. being there for someone emotionally, yes. I've had it before. Mm -hmm. You know, I could tell a tone of a voice, "Girl, what's wrong? You okay?" And here go tumbling down, and I'm like, I wasn't ready for it. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. That was a load of questions. I'm going to be a good friend. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So separating that um, can become a bit difficult mm -hmm. um, because, again, when people go to the doctor, when they go to the hospital, it's not usually for something good. No. They're not in the I best. dread going to those places. See? Look at look at this. You see what I mean? So it's not usually, oh, I want to wake up today and go spend my time, sit in the waiting room for an hour, and go see the doctor and listen to bad news. Yeah. It's not for that. Right. So, um, you know, maintaining professionalism at all times. That's right. Um, but still being human is a delicate balance. I, I have not found that yet. <laughs> okay, but you will in due time. But I hope it, I will. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're working your way there, and that's a good thing. Is there any words of encouragement that you can say to the sharks? Okay. Yes. I can say that if you woke up this morning, God still has a purpose and a plan for your life. Mm -hmm. So meaning that if you haven't found your passion yet or your purpose yet, if you woke up this morning, it's on its way. That's right. Yeah. You have to be, <laughs> you have to be determined. Like I said, you have to be your own bush. You have to be your own cheerleader. <laughs> Girl. Girl is everything. Yeah. Girl. I know. And you know, that that that's the thing for me. And you know, being consistent in what you do. And like, you know, I know you and I both have two different um, careers, but at the same time for me, I'm, I'm living that career every moment, even in my personal time. Grocery store, the mall, of hey, course. how you doing? I'm Shy Will. I, it doesn't stop. Yeah, where is, is that, where's the separation? Nope, it doesn't there's stop. No I'm still, I'm, I'm yes, still that woman that's mm -hmm. still doing it because, you know, there's no time to stop. I'm not where I want to be, to be. yet, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm still working towards it. So that's what helps me be consistent. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I'm not saying there's no days off. There's just, right. you know, there's Very no few <laughs> days off. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just... 
put that up. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And that's you how know? it is with, with building a medical practice, grassroots. I didn't inherit 5,000 patients. Mm. I didn't, it was my first, I got my first patient and I made a relationship with that one. Mm -hmm. And I keep making relationships. Yeah. That's, that's what you have to do. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And then you have that last patient that's going to tell someone else that doesn't know you, and they're going to come just like the doctor said, told one of your patients they're in good hands. Right. Exactly. How does that feel? You know, that, that felt, I was like, oh my God. I was like, oh, thank God. I'm like, at least I'm, I'm uh, at least someone in the community. <laughs> Oh, this is how they feel? Okay, I didn't know, but at least, um, you know, I'm, I'm digging, I'm digging, I'm digging to the gold. Okay. And the gold is probably like right here. And instead of turning around, I'm gonna just keep digging. <laughs> I don't know really how close I am, but obviously I am close. That, there we so. go. That's so good. That's so good to hear. And I want to tell you, thank you so much for taking Aww. time to joining us today. Awesome. It's and great being here. Shai Will. Yes. Great yes. being with you, Shai. Yes. Thank <laughs> you, Tiffany. It's been a pleasure. So, of course, like I said, thank you guys. Thank you, Sharks, for tuning in to Moments with Shai Will. Till next time, I'll see you.